You're watching the Coaches Roundtable on the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. Welcome to Coach's Roundtable. I'm Ed Cody, and welcome our guest from Mars High School, Pittsburgh Pirate pitcher David Bednar. David, thanks for joining us. And when you hear that, your name associated with the Pirates, how do you feel about that? <laughs> it's exciting. It's uh, you know, it's a good thing to have come after it. Uh, I can't really beat it. It's a dream come true. David, when you were at Mars, uh, I think you were featured on our spotlight almost every week for outstanding pitching performances. You go on to Lafayette. You had a stellar career there and then drafted by the San Diego Padres. Were you anticipating getting drafted or was, did it come as a surprise to you? Uh, early in my college career didn't really set in as like a, like when I first got there, I wasn't like, uh, that wasn't the first thing on my mind. My first thing was just kind of, you know, being able to pitch some innings at Lafayette and establish myself there. And then as the years kind of gone up, went on there, um, I started throwing better and then uh, played some summer ball and kind of had some good exposure to some uh, scouts and all that stuff. So um, after my sophomore year, that kind of became a little bit more real. And then um, when like scouts started to come see me my junior year, um, you know, it, it kind of settled in a little bit like it was going to be a real possibility. David, uh, you're a starter at Mars High School, start at Lafayette. You go to the Padres what did they see in you you went from being a starter to a reliever and how were you with that, that change in adjustment uh, it was definitely a transition but um you know I, I I like it a lot because it gives me the opportunity to pitch every day um definitely a mindset change because you just kind of you just got to be you know all locked in every single day and because you never know when you're going to be able to pitch um um, but yeah, it's, it was definitely a little bit of a transition going from, you know, being stretched out to just kind of all blowing it all out in one inning, one to two inning spurts. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I've grown to like it a lot. David, you're a big guy, 6'1", 249. And looking at that, I would assume that you are a power pitcher. Is that how you see yourself? I would say so. Yeah. I like to use my fastball, I like to attack and I'm, I like just to be aggressive in the zone. When, when you make the transition to change from, being a starter to reliever and what they did with you in the minors, how much do you have to change your pitching repertoire? You have to cut some pitches out. You have to narrow down the, what you throw in in particular situations as a reliever. Um, I didn't really change my repertoire too much. Uh, it's more of just kind of refining. And I think uh, especially being a reliever, you you kind of have – so much, uh, so little room for error, just because one one bad pitch can uh, cost you the game. But uh, if anything, I think it's just kind of being more consistent with all three of my pitches and um, just like just being aggressive with it. So you have seventeen or eighteen major league games under your belt. When you came up from the minors, when the Padres called you up, uh, what was the biggest change or adjustment that you had to make? Um, honestly, the, the biggest thing was just kind of all the stuff outside the baseball. I mean, obviously, um, <clears throat> obviously you're playing against the best in the world and it's, you're, you're finally living your dream and playing major league baseball. Um, but at the end of the day, it's still baseball. It's still the same game you grew up playing. And the biggest adjustment for me was just kind of all the, uh, you know, seeing, 30,000 plus people in the stands and all, all, like all the stuff that kind of came with that. So that was, that was the biggest adjustment and all the, all of that stuff that came with it. I've been to San Diego. It's a beautiful stadium. It's a beautiful uh, city, not too hard to make an adjustment to living there. <laughs> no, it was, it's beautiful. There's, there, <laughs> I think I was there for however long and there was it rained one time, I think this whole past summer. Hey David, so much talk about the analytics we've discussed it on our show 
a, a number of, of times. And I've read a lot of major league pitchers now. They rely so much on analytics as much as they do on their uh, pitching coach in the majors. Where are you in this situation between analytics and your reliance on a pitching coach? Um, I think there's definitely a time and place for all the analytics, I think. But at the same time, um, you just kind of have to mesh the, you know, the old school ideologies and then obviously all the new school stuff with all the analytics. I think you can't just you can't have one without the other. And also a lot of it is just basically stuff that guys have been saying for years. Um, but just like they, they're able to put a number to it. So I think uh, I, I, I like to use it. I like just to see. Uh, some of the things, but I don't dive too much into it. Um, just kind of take it for what it is just because uh, ultimately at the end of the day, you just need to get outs and whatever can help you get outs uh, is, you know, it's the route I'm going to take. What What is your main out pitch that you rely on? Uh, probably my splitter when it's right. Um, that's usually when I go for uh, later in the count and try to put guys away with. Now, is the splitter something that you developed in the minors or you used it when you were at Lafayette? Uh, I developed it whenever I was uh, at our instructional league in 2017, right after I first got drafted. Um, or 2016, I'm sorry. Um, and uh, I just kind of picked up the pitch. And one of our, uh, uh, one of our special in instructors, uh, special assistants, was uh, Hideo Nomo. Um, who had an incredible, unbelievable career and had an unbelievable splitter. So um, having him kind of show me how to um, throw it and give me some pointers along the way um, really helped that pitch take off for me. David, you're heading in your first spring training with the Pirates. The Pirates are probably going to have the youngest team in Major League Baseball. They have traded away most of the veterans. Have the Pirates told you what they're, ex what they're expecting from you headed into this uh, first spring with them? Uh, I haven't gotten to that much, that much detail about that quite yet, but I mean, ultimately at the end of the day, I'm just going to go out there and try and compete for a job and uh, try and win a job and pitch some innings this year. Any thoughts that you'd like to go back into a starting role? Are you comfortable being a reliever? I'm comfortable being a reliever, but I mean, wherever they want me to, <laughs> whatever and wherever they want me to throw, I'll, I'll be ready. Well, you, you're at Mars. You're just maybe 20 some miles from Pittsburgh. Did you grow up a Pirate fan when you were a kid? Oh, big time. <laughs> I mean, of course, big, uh, big Pirates fan. Uh, you know, there are a number of other players from the area in the, in the major leagues, uh, former Butler pitcher, uh, Brendan McKee out of Mercy Harris. He's in the Astros chain. Have you had an opportunity to cross paths with him? Yeah, I actually played with, uh, I played against Colin, uh, when or I was Colin, in double a, yes. I played against Colin in, when I was in double a and, uh, in Amarillo, he was in Corpus Christi with the Astros. And uh, we actually were in the Texas League All Star Game together, so I got to um, play with play against him and with him for a little bit. So yeah, it, he's he's been throwing really well. It's been cool to watch him succeed. Well, David, uh, we're excited to see you with with the Pirates. Uh, good luck to you coming up in the spring training, and uh, look forward to see seeing you in a Pirate uniform this year. Awesome, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. I'll be right back with Ellen George. High school sports, community events, all of your favorite local shows are calling the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel their home. Find out everything your neighborhood has to offer on Channel 100 or on YouTube. Spirit, town pride, local communities. This is the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. I am back, joined to my right by the Swami George Abraham, to my left by the Tiger Albert Campman. Guys, how great to have Mars uh, grad and pirate pitcher David Bednar on our show. And, uh, Two weeks ago, he's with the Padres, traded to the Pirates, his uh, team that he loved when he was a kid. And now his dream comes true. He gets to go to spring training with the Pirates. Eddie, when you did that interview, the thought that came to my mind was all the kids that have these dreams. And if you work for it and you are given the ability, don't, 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 let, don't let some jerk tell you you can't do it. There's enough people out there telling you, how about this kid? Some, some teacher would have said, no, don't do that. Go do something else. Do what you want to do, kids. Go for it, but you got to work hard to do it. I'll tell you that. He's had 18 major league appearances with the uh, Padres. He's developed a, a, a split fingered uh, fastball. And uh, next on the list, a Butler pitcher, uh, Colin McKee, who uh, pitched at Mercyhurst. He's been in the Astros chain for four years. He should be going to spring training with the Astros. 
And we always hope for these local kids to make it because we can brag about them. And uh, So many. And the kid yes. from Blackhawk was already. Oh, yeah, McKay is an all-timer, yes. Let's go to our basketball top scores under spotlight. Caden Rainey of Union, Reimersburg, 30. Michael Brooks of Grove City, 25. Devin Carney of Butler, 24. He averages 29.3 per game. Nathan Waltman of Carn City, 23. Isaiah Boyce of Newcastle, 23. Sheldon Cox of Newcastle, 22, averaging 14.9 per game. Ryan Lang of Knock, 22. He averages 29.6. Kyle Pry of Monotaw, 22. And the leading scorer in the WPIL, it's uh, Vinny Cugini of Aquinas. He averages 35.3 per game. So you see Ryan Lang is right up there. George always stresses balance, says it all the time on our show. When I hear a kid that averages 30 a game, and what I do it after you say it, I go home and check the team's record. <laughs> yes. If they're playing on a winning team, then those points are valuable. Yes. If you're playing on a losing team, I don't, I don't value it as much. I like when I hear 18, 14, 12, and the team 7 and 0. I love seeing that. And uh, let's go to the girls. Alexis uh, Robinson of uh, Rochester, 31. She averages 16.6 .6 per game. Aston Pry, Monotalk, 25. She averages over 20 per game. Malena Desort of Freeport, 23. Olivia West of Seneca Valley, 22. She averages 17.3. Uh, Neva Ewing of Knock, 22. She averages 15.3. Sophia Kelly of Hampton, 21. Kayla Holer of Hampton, 21. Madeline Boyer of Knock, 20. And the leading scorer of the girls is Kennedy Montu of Plum. She averages 28 points per game. And in uh, wrestling, Seneca Valley's Alejandro Herrera Rondon. He won the 152-pound class at the 54th Powerade Tournament, and he was named the Outstanding Wrestler. Rondon is 14-0. He is the number one ranked wrestler in the 152-pound class. This according to the Pittsburgh Trib and their rankings. Cole Spencer, Pine Richardson, 11-1. He's number one in the 160-pound class. And team rankings in 3A, Seneca Valley is number two. North Allegheny is number five. And Butler is number eight. In swimming, Butler swimmers set three new pool records. David Bocci in the 200-yard individual medley. Ben Borvendeg in the 50 freestyle and the 200 freestyle relay team of Bocce, Borvendeg, Sam Diener, and Tanner Vietmeyer. They set a new school record in. Congratulations to Pine Richland grad Grant Krieger. He's a walk-on wide receiver at the University of Alabama. We looked the last few years, the wide receiver from Central Valley. Robert Foster. Robert yes. Foster, mm -hmm. uh, Alabama National Championship. Two years ago, the kid from Central Catholic, I forget his name, he was a long snapper at Clemson. So uh, credit to uh, uh, Krieger. I talked to him. He's very modest. He said, I really didn't play. I said, hey, you're out there practicing every day. You had the guts to walk on to the team. Uh, he was right there on the sideline in the champion chip game. We all know as coaches how valuable it is for those kids who show up every day and practice and never get in the game. Well, you mentioned something as you went along, the name appeared, Cole Spencer. When you, when you, yes. Think about that, coming off a state championship. Yep. Know he's a great wrestler, but still, never missing a beat. Telling his teammates, I'm here for you. I'm, gonna, I'm a great wrestler. I'm going to come back out. I, I love kids that play dual sports. I'm big on that. I, I still think it's part of a team setting. Their name is Pine Richland. The name is North Allegheny. It's not the individual name. Congratulations. And, and, to that. and he has a chance to leave school with uh, uh, two WPL championships in football, state championship in football, and two WPL championships about in that. wrestling, yes. and going for a state championship in wrestling. I love Pretty that. amazing career. Remember we were down there. They were working with him on the side. He was just a sophomore. Yes. It's a young kid, like a colt. Like you did. You yes. knew they're going to yes. coach him up, and that's what Pine Richland does. They coach him up, and I, sure they have talent, but there's you know you have to coach them up. Like yep. you said a few years ago, their defense got markedly better, and they've been great ever since. That's a great point, George. So, something tells me they're going to have a good quarterback this year too. I don't know his name. No, they do. Oh, oh, they do. I've heard already. He's a great Pine. Yes. Yeah. Kid, there, it was, there was uh, a two high, years ago. It was yeah, an eighth there was a junior high kid that was coming through that. Let's go to our basketball power rankings in boys. North Allegheny followed by Upper St. Clair, Fox Chapel, Pine Richland coming on strong. Uh, they handled uh, Mount Lebanon. Hempfield in there at number five. How about 
North Allegheny 78, Seneca Valley 77. At the end of three quarters, it was like an average game. 53 to 41 North Allegheny. In the fourth quarter, the two teams combined for 61 points. 36 by Seneca Valley, 25 by North Allegheny. 36 points in a quarter. That, 61 that, that, total. That is NBA, no Would question. Would you want to guess there were some fouls? Yeah. If you want to guess, right, there's no stall games being used no. today. Like they I, were just firing them up. I watch a million games. I just thought about this with the coach this week. I said, no one has a delay game. No, no one cares about it. If there's 35 seconds left in a quarter, shoot twice. they shoot five times. Yeah, no, I'm <laughs> and, and when you're talking about NA, you said balanced scoring. They get, they get four guys scoring double figures every yes, game. Yes, and that's why they're winning. Absolutely. You have to guard a little bit. I mean, you know, this 78-77 stuff, it, it, it makes for great conversation. I mean, all the years but you, you know coach, coming. all the years I've done never. games, 30 years, I never remember a quarter like that in my life. No, you're not going to. No, the either. one team gets 36, the other one gets 11. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Yeah, I but, understand. But 61. <laughs> no, I, I know. And, you know, we joke about it. But you think you're beating St. Clair with 78? Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens here in the, in the in playoffs. You know, Fox Chapel 7-2. That's the only loss Upper St. Clair had, a 74-72 uh, loss. But I still like Upper St. Clair from what I, I hear. But uh, North Allegheny, they, they just – I don't think they, they're worried about the other team and what the other team does offensively because they're scoring at a high rate every game. ONA is 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 got a new coach playing up tempo and they got and they got to move in. You get, I'm telling you, yeah, I mean, it happens all the time. You get if, and you know, Dinkin stays doesn't go early to Penn yeah, State. The the basketball you need one. So many people will say to me, they only got one player move in, and I want to say they have five. That means they made the other four. <laughs> that much better. Yeah, <laughs> me and Paul and Sharon two years ago, Western Sabbath, I'm on the table. And uh, the kid from Sharon just killed him. The one who went to IUP, Porterfield. six, uh -huh. eight, he just killed me. Man, every basket. Guy's walking off. He goes to the Sharon coach. He said, yeah, you didn't have number 32. Kid, kid goes, yeah, but we do. <laughs> goes, in other words, one guy in basketball, remember, it's 20% of the team. And, you know, we started off preseason with Butler's number one. They're in last place in a section. They've had some injuries, Gratz, Miller, and Cranebucker, but still their 0-4 have not won a section game. George and I are big on not, not using injuries as an excuse. We are because uh, – Yeah. The re, there was a reason. I'm not yeah. saying Butler – Butler has a real reason. But I guarantee you somewhere along the line, George and I, you, have played a team that had injuries too. Yeah, yeah. Butler's played somebody with injuries oh, yes. before. Yeah. So yeah. I understand that. It's like I using grasp the that. COVID hey. the other day. This guy's using COVID – for an excuse for pit basketball. I said, I'm sorry, but every team's doing it. Hey, I played in I played in WL championship game. We lost three starters with injuries. There's no excuse. We lost twelve. That's, that's what you we said, lost. no excuse. We lost. We should have won. Right. We no lost. excuse. Good we line. No maybe. excuse at all. No. We we had a lot of good players on that team. Hey in five A, the Canes rolling along undefeated eleven oh. What a team they have. Followed by Char Valley, undefeated Highlands, Mars, and Franklin Regional. In 4A, Belvern and North Catholic, Montour, Lincoln Park, and Deer Lakes. In 3A, Nishanik, Avonworth, Shadyside Academy, South Allegheny, and Brentwood. In 2A, Olsh, Carlinton, Carn City in there, going strong. Greensburg Central Catholic and Jeanette. And in 1A, Union of Newcastle, Eden Christian, Imani Christian, Rochester, and Bishop Canavan. For the girls, 6A, North Allegheny, Mount Lebanon, Bethel Park, uh, Upper St. Clair and Norwin. In 5A, it's Trinity, Char Valley, Armstrong, Hampton, and South Fayette. And in 4A, it's Beaver, Knock remaining undefeated, number two, Quaker Valley, Southmoreland, and Blackhawk. In 3A, North Catholic, Mohawk, Laurel, Brentwood, Avonworth, North Catholic defeating Mohawk in a head-to-head -head contest, 54-38. to I watched it. I watched it. And congratulations to Sal. Uh, so, um, Coach Larkin, Molly, what's her? Molly Rotman. Mo, Mo, Coach Rotman, I'm going to call her Larkin. Molly, yeah, Molly. He's just, related to her. Would you think he'd know yeah. her name? Molly, she hasn't been invited over for dinner Pop, lately. Her, her dad's yeah. Papa Larkin. Ever since her grandma chased me out of the church when your daughter got married, <laughs> I haven't said anything about North Carolina. Well, Molly, yeah, because you guys bring up those Scottish <laughs> schools. Molly was, Molly was tremendous in that game. Yeah. I'm telling you, I give a coach credit that yeah. she was. she knew exactly what Mark did. Mohawk fires a lot of threes. They forced them back five feet. They were shooting thirty footers. I watched the whole game. That had a, that was a lot to the that was a lot to the coaching victory there. I, you, I usually don't say that. 
And it Wallach was. came down two days later and spanked Bubba. 50 to 30. Put Omaha's good. that good. Bubba. No, yeah, no. They're a good team. Yes. In 2A, Sarah, Catholic, followed by Nishanik, Olsh, Burgettstown, Winchester, Thurston, and Montauk. How about Nishanik? They knocked off previously undefeated number one, Olsh. That was a big win. Big win. That was a big win for, for Nishanik girls. And in 1A, it's Rochester, Aquinas Academy, West Green, Clareton, and Eden Christian. You Ars said at Carn City Boys. I think I'm here in yeah. double A. Get all the old tapes you can get. <laughs> you're playing. Or Kennedy Christian, because yes. that's who you're playing. I'm telling you right sure. tonight. Well, they're no, good. They got a number of football players on that team. Nathan Waltman, you got a 6'5", 240 pound center, yeah. and he's a force in there. Eddie, what you, what, this, look, don't go by that. I want you guys both said something important. If you know you're good, yeah. now's the time to start scouting yeah, don't wait. the best teams because you know wait. that's your, don't wait. You know, if you know you're good, get ready to play Kennedy and Olsh. Know everything about them. Give your kids the best chance to win. Because it's the only way you're going to beat them. If you both play the same, you're going to lose. Oh, yes. Our stories of the week in the National Hockey League, the Rangers 3, the Pens 1. The uh, Pens really struggling on offense. 0 for 6 in the power play, 26 uh, shots on goal. Malkin has disappeared from the offense. And the next two games, the Pens 5, 4, and 1 postponed with the Devils because of COVID. And uh, let's go to the big story in Pittsburgh. GM uh, Jim Rutherford resigns. He says personal reasons, but he's left the door open. He wants to be a general manager again in the National Hockey League. This is with five months left on his contract. Now, I remember last August when they lost to Montreal in the playoffs. He ripped the team, criticized the players as being quitters. Well, what's he done? He's walked away from the team, and he's had a penchant of doing this. He'll do an interview with someone with the players around and criticize their play and work. saying he's going to trade them, which is Bush League to me. There's a lot of grumbling I heard among the players. They're not sad to see him leave. Well, you said it best. Don't, don't say something and follow it up with a different, different technique of doing things. If you call somebody a quitter, don't quit. That means you are the real reason things are happening. And he does a lot of what, not coaching but GMing. In the press. Mm -hmm. And, boy, I don't know him from Adam, but I don't care for that. I never Neither did, do and I. he's famous for that. I think he got some blowback inside the organization, and he couldn't take the criticism. Well, you know what happened? He asked for a new contract. They said, well, wait. And he said, I'm quit. I mean, that's what it was. He wanted a contract now. Yeah, that reminds me of these college football coaches. Recruit a kid. Stick with it. You no. be loyal to the and then oh I got more money I'm going see a goodbye. It's a runaway and, freight train. It is. In yeah. Today's world. We both it, all three serious, of us don't like serious, that. We don't like that. Serious problem that that they have. The NFL. Uh, Art Rooney. Uh, an announcement last week. Ben is welcome back. However, with a caveat, not under his current contract. And Ben said this, which I laughed at. I don't care about my pay at all this year. Okay, then donate it to charity. That's what he should Give do. Give it to some charitable organization. Or then. Katie Case, make sure they're filming when you're at the food bank. <laughs> right. Uh, Rooney, uh, critical of the lack of a running game, and I think, well, the Steelers are going to go out and bring in a new offensive line coach. No. They promoted the assistant offensive line coach, Adrian Clem, to be the new offensive line coach. Same thing they did with Matt Canada. Well, didn't they fire a guy and then move the guy that was under him up? Yeah. Now they did the same thing here. No. Uh. And uh, – you, you guys tell me what you think. There's no criticism of Tomlin and the late season collapses last three years. Last two years, they're 2-9 and nine in, in December down, down the stretch. Uh, the Steelers, three playoff wins the last 10 years. They haven't won a playoff game since 2016. This idea of Ben is coming back for one last chance, my question is, at what? One, one last chance at what? What is well, what that's windows in his, open? That's in his mind, but I don't think they have the team. You that, see a window open? I think no, I think the team is who they are. That's what that's really what I believe they are. I mean, I, when I watch the Steelers play, whenever 11-0, I told George, I don't see them as good as five other teams. Yeah. Um, they who are they are? They're they're, they're 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 getting the best out of them. That's why I don't get on Tom like you do. I don't think any coach could get them any better than they are. They have a weak offensive line, a weak secondary. Well, uh, I don't know. I, I, so what I'm do you not, do? I'm not getting on Tom. I'm asking a question. There's something wrong here in the late season collapses. What's going on that this is happening? He's the head guy. There is no running game. If he let Ben get away with running that offense, that's that's on him. My, that's I take my it the point. other way. I think the wins they had earlier in the season were facade. I don't. You know, I think they shouldn't have won that many games. I don't know how they did it. They, right. they were winning games they shouldn't have won. Dallas, they won. I mean, they're just—they're just, they're just an, they're a, boy, they're going off the cliff, Eddie. 
Oh, uh, they're, about, going, they're going off the cliff. Uh, oh. There's so much to build. There's so much to do. Yes. You, and you guess can't what? get them all at once. First time Cleveland's been good in 20 years. Yeah, so they're going to come. Uh -huh. And we know the Ravens are solid. Yeah. Ravens have an organization yeah. very similar to Pittsburgh. I can't re see them 2 and 12. Hey, guys, big trade. Uh, the Lions and the Rams. Matt Stafford to the Rams for Jared Goff. And the Lions pick up two first round picks and a third round pick. Really loaded up. Who gets the best of this deal? I think both teams. Uh, the, the Rams have a great defense. They get Stafford. But the Lions, have, what did Branch Rickey say about Slugger Ralph Kiner when he traded him to the Cubs? Finish. We finished last wow. with him. <laughs> we could finish last without him. So I, I look at this as a plus for Detroit with, with getting two first round picks plus a third round pick and a decent quarterback. I'm with you on that one, Eddie. I thought Detroit got like the Herschel Walker. De yeah, like, Detroit got the trade. Detroit yeah. might have made themselves the trade. Then in four years from now, yeah. they'll say that was one of the greatest trades ever. I like Detroit's trade. How about Stafford? He had one request: no, trade me anywhere but New England, where Patricia was going. Yeah, think about that. That's yeah, he didn't want to go to New England. No, sir. Did Patricia hard back? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, the Super Bowl now, Kansas City by three. The over and under. 56. Brady wins. If he wins the seventh Super Bowl, is he now the, the greatest of all time, all sports? Bill Russell with 11 rings, uh, but a bear with 10, Jordan with six, Jabbar with six. Where do we put Brady? I can't say he's better, but I, but he's definitely named the you know, right there. I, can't, I won't say, go out and say that. I say Russell still. I still, it, I still, I still say Russell. the hardest sport to win a championship in? I they say hockey. Because you have to beat them seven, you know, okay. four times. You have to win, you have to win what? 16 the, games. 16. Uh, and if Mahomes wins, is he getting this discussion, a conversation? If no, he no, he's got a straight? long way to go. He's got a way to go. Two don't, two don't do it. Two doesn't do it with Brady. Two but he's do, 25. Two doesn't do, <laughs> yeah. No, but if he does, no. If he wins four more, yeah. but don't give me two. Montana, no. Bradshaw. Four. Oh. Well, yeah. And, and yeah. Brady, let's see him win some more. Here's my prediction. Uh, I'm saying uh, Kansas City 34-24. Two points Sounds over the right. Sounds about right. Right around the total, and you're, you're picking. The, you're I'm going with the Kansas Chiefs. City, yeah. And I, I, I pick Kansas City to win, but I'm not anymore. I'm somehow. Oh, you're switching somehow, to Tampa. I'm, I'm changing gears in my head. Uh -huh. That wait a minute. Tampa Bay has won three on the road. They're playing the best of anybody. Uh -huh. And uh, I just think they can do it. I, I, we'll see what happens. Hey, thanks for joining us. We run out of time. I'll see you next week.